Hello again. In this segment, we're going to be talking about the principles of the cantilever. Uh, cantilevers are an important uh, feature in the support structures that animals use, and, uh, and as such, uh, understanding their mechanics is an important feature in understanding how it is that animals hold themselves up and how they manage to hold themselves together in the face of the different kinds of forces they experience as a part of their normal life. So let's take a look at what a cantilever is. A cantilever uh, is, here's the way it's spelled. And the simplest kind of a cantilever uh, comes from taking a wall, some kind of a nice support structure over here, something that's nice and solid. So this is our wall right over there. And we embed in that wall a beam of some sort. And this can be just a square beam. And if we hang from that beam a load of some sort, and this is, can be any kind of a weight that's going to be pulled down by gravity, what's going to happen in that instance is that the, is that the, uh, the, the beam will bend slightly. I'm exaggerating it quite a bit here. It will bend slightly under the influence of that load such that the load is now supported that way. Now, you'll remember when we spoke about beams, uh, this is distributing the load in uh, different ways. In this area right here, the beam is stretched. In other words, the load is carried under tension here. And in this part of the beam, the beam is compressed. In other words, the load is carried by compression at that point. And the genius of the cantilever is that it takes the load and it redistributes it up by compression and then down through the wall down to some stronger support, say the foundation of the building. So that's the simplest kind of cantilever. And the important point here, again, is to remember that the bending of the beam redistributes the load so that it is supported by tension here, but the force is redirected by compression through the bottom part of the beam and then redirected through the wall down to the ground. If your beam is bending alarmingly under the load that you want it to support, then you can generate a somewhat more complicated cantilever. And that's going to look like this. So you have your beam that's embedded in the wall, nicely supported there. And now instead of relying on tension within the beam to redistribute the load, you can simply hook the beam's end to a cable or something that will help support the load in tension. Now if you hang a load from this beam, you're doing the same thing that you're doing in cantilevers, in the simplest cantilever. You are supporting the load in this part by tension. Now you're redirecting the uh, tension load up to this cable over here. But you're still redistributing the load by compression, but now you're redistributing it by compression through the entire beam. And then, of course, the load can then be redirected downward into the foundation or the ground or the rest of the wall. Now, the principle of the cantilever, you can see it in operation everywhere. And one of the most common uh, ways in which you see it, and this will be especially relevant to our discussions of animals, is the so-called so cantilever bridge. And in the case of our simple cantilevers that we outlined before, we're just assuming that the load is going to be distributed down from the wall down to the foundation. But of course, keep in mind that the compression is pressing against the wall, and if the wall isn't strong enough, this will actually push its way through the wall. Not a good thing. So one thing you can do is balance that load by an equal load on the other side, and that gives you the operation of a cantilever bridge. We'll start with the foundation, which we'll put right down here. Let's zoom in on that a little bit. A foundation that's on the ground. And then we have a pillar that is strong in compression. And then we take cantilever beams and we put them on both sides of the beam. And we support those with cables on both sides. 
And now we have a cantilever bridge. Now we're still directing loads hung from the beams by tension through the cables. We're still directing loads by compression along the beam towards the pillar, but now the compressive force on one side is actually matched by the compression force on the other. If your, uh, if your pillar is strong enough in compression, then it will have no trouble supporting that load. And when you have that, then you can reliably ensure that the load is directed downward into the foundation where it can be supported. And of course, as we said, this is a cantilever bridge, and among other things, you can have automobiles floating around there, going back and forth across the bridge, and the cantilever can support not only the automobile, but also the weight of the bridge itself. So when, with respect to cantilevers, the important part is, is that you have a mechanism that takes loads and distributes the support of that load equally through tension-bearing structures and compression-bearing structures. Okay, well that's all for now. In another segment, we'll come back and see how this applies to actual animals. Thanks for listening.